Hello again, and welcome back to Jab and Flow here on the Street Parking channel of podcasts. So I really liked last week starting it out with three deep breaths. So I don't know if we'll do this every week, but let's do it again this week. So if as long as you're not driving, close your eyes, sit up straight, take a deep breath in, fill your belly, let it all out slow. This time when you breathe in, fill your belly, fill your rib cage, and let it out. And the last one, fill your belly, fill your rib cage, lift your chest. Take another little sip of air in at the top. Slowly let it go. And here we are. Hope you guys had a great week. I hope that you made less decisions and you felt like your freed up energy was able to be directed in a positive, constructive, and maybe even fun way. This week, I got something good. I got a great action item. So stick around for a minute. But have you wondered why certain things are funny? And why it hurts when you see somebody else get hurt? Like there was an entire show, America's Funniest Home Videos when I was a kid. And it was basically just every week, a half an hour of like dads getting hit in the junk with uh, wiffle ball bats. And if you've ever seen that, especially if you're with a crowd and you see that the entire crowd is like, ooh, it's like you can feel it yourself when you see that happen to someone else. Um, or when you see something sad, you know, people like sad movies, uh, and you cry when the people are crying on the screen or when something terrible is happening. Or when you see people laugh, it makes you laugh, even if you don't even know what they're laughing about. When I was 15 years old, I did Outward Bounds Mountaineering course. And it was a bunch of teenage kids they took up into the mountains for three weeks and we backpacked around and you learn some general, very basic uh, survival skills, but you also just, it's pretty cool. It was really, it was really hard, but it was an amazing experience. One that I kept getting lessons from for a long time. Part of that three weeks, you do what's called a solo. And for three days, you are by yourself and you're by yourself in the mountains. And I'm not talking like the mountains where there's a trail and there's other people hiking by. I'm like, we are in the mountains, the wilderness. There is nobody around. And you get what you have in your backpack. They give you a packet. It was like a packet of crackers, maybe like four crackers and a box of <clears throat> raisins or something like that. That was all the food you got for three days. And then of course you have a water bottle. There is water nearby and you get an iodine, a vial of iodine so you can clean the water. It makes it taste terrible, but you won't get sick if you drink it. So you can drink all the water you want. You get about like six crackers. Uh, and you get, you know, you have a little tarp, not even a tent, but just a tarp so that you can protect yourself from the rain. They had showed us through the course of the program how to, if it snows, you can dig a hole in the snow and you can sleep in there. It's actually pretty warm. Good sleeping bag, that kind of thing. Long story long, at the end of the solo, oh, there was like 18 of us, but it was split into two groups. So maybe it was only more like nine of us. Nine of us reconvene with the instructors. 
And we hadn't seen or spoken to anyone for three days. And we also hadn't really eaten. So you're a little bit delirious. And as soon as we all saw each other, we just started laughing. And none of us knew why we were laughing, which made us laugh even harder. And then you're seeing everyone around you just cracking up and you it's uncontrollable. We just have the, had this fit of laughter for what felt like 20 minutes probably. Maybe it was shorter than that, but it felt like just forever this uncontrollable laughter. It was a really unique experience. Now fast forward to a time when I was living in Los Angeles and I went to this shamanic breathing class. Really epic experience as well. All different types of breathing exercises and different stuff. There was like sound baths and, and you cover yourself in a blanket if you want to. And then you do some kind of physical stuff, but you're basically lying on the ground the whole time. And at one point we scream as loud as we can. But at another point, somebody just started laughing. And then another person started laughing. And then all of a sudden you hear people all around you laughing. So you start laughing. And I had no idea why. There was nothing funny. Nothing started it. We just all were laughing, laughing until we were crying. And then I started crying for a while. And there was just, that was a whole different part of it. But the laughter was, was just crazy. Like we had no idea why. But it's contagious. And if you've ever watched, one of my favorite things to do is watch people break during comedy sketches when they break character and start laughing. I cannot help it. When I see somebody who's trying to be serious or play a character and they break and start laughing, I crack up. It's the funniest thing in the world. Um, so I was doing a little bit of research into this and I came across this idea of mirror neurons. And apparently this is a fairly recent observation in the field of neuroscience. I'm by no means an expert, but I am fascinated by that field. So they found these things called mirror neurons. And basically it's a certain type of neuron that fires when a person performs a motor function, like some kind of motor act. And also when they observe somebody else perform the same act or a similar act. So if you watch little kids, if they're watching a movie or something and they see a character on screen like doing karate, like the kid will start doing karate. Um, we mimic these things that we see and sometimes we do it almost involuntarily. It's like we see something, if we're interested by it, our brains will fire. These mirror, mirror neurons will fire and we just start doing it beyond our own control. It's crazy. So that's why when you see somebody laughing, you have this urge to laugh. And certain people have different levels of functionality of those mirror neurons. <clears throat> And they found that mirror neurons also play a role in like associative learning, which I would encourage you to explore on your own. It's a little bit different from the subject of this podcast, but it's fascinating stuff. Um, and it shows how nurture is much more important than nature in terms of um, empathy and, and getting basically coming up with a way to combat the situation of not having your mirror neurons fire as functionally as maybe somebody else. Anyways, another episode, another podcast. But these things, these neurons, they shed light on human interaction. And I think that it is a great bit of evidence to, to prove that we are social creatures 
that we are connected to one another, that we do see ourselves in others and others see themselves in us. We literally have these, these brain cells that mirror what we see other people doing. And that can be a really good thing. It could also be a very tragic thing. And like I mentioned last week, the importance of remaining vigilant, standing guard at the edge of your mind, and protecting what you allow in there. Because if you see people being mean and ugly to each other and name-calling and and attacking one another through various forms of media, what does that do to us? What does that make our mirror neurons do? How do, we, how do they want to fire? It's not a good thing. If you watch acts of kindness, you are more likely to commit acts of kindness. And it feels really good. And there's other hormones that get involved as well, like oxytocin. But on a neurological level, this stuff exists. This stuff is taking place in your brain. And you might as well use that information and take advantage of it for good. So, the action item. Here's what I suggest. Every day this week, for at least five minutes, I want you to watch something or listen to something that makes you laugh. And it should be other people laughing. So even as much as I love physical comedy, not stuff like people falling but people laughing. So if you YouTube, you know, SNL characters, uh, breaking character, you'll get a lot of good stuff. I was watching some last night and I was just dying laughing in my office and Carolina came in and was like, what are you watching? And I was like, you gotta, you gotta watch this. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, watching babies laughing is, is you cannot watch a compilation of babies laughing and not start laughing. You can't do it. I challenge you to try. You can't do it. So, so spend five minutes every day, preferably in the morning, as early in the morning before you start doing everything else for your day. Take five minutes and watch people laughing, genuinely laughing, and see how that changes your attitude for the rest of the day how much more joy you happen to find in your day by taking five minutes and watch other people laugh. That's it. Simple and sweet. I'm really excited for you guys to do this. I can't wait to do it. I started early. I'm going to keep going with it. Um, I hope you have a great week. I love you, and I'll talk to you soon.